So what's been happening? Over on Look East, this lady got a little bit of tongue tied. Businesses which have delivered £43 million worth of investment across the country... The, com the county... <laughs> Or did someone drop acid in Cameron's tea? We've got unicorns. <laughs> he was talking so much shit, even the Indian Prime Minister checked out. We both have big ambitions for the relationship between our countries. We want a modern, essential... <laughs> Here's a tip. Don't watch an episode of Bake Off before presenting the news. Giving it the royal seal of approval at the Royal Albert Hall, William and Cake. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, don't you love it when a reporter remains calm? This, uh... Oh, 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 oh. What is that? That's because it's hot outside. Stuff like that happens. Did, was that live? Are we live? Oh, brother. Now, the big news of the week was the senseless killings in Paris. France has started three days of national mourning for the victims of the terror attacks in the heart of the French capital. Grief, shock and considerable anger tonight of the worst terror attack in Europe for a decade. Islamic State, in an official statement, are claiming responsibility. The suspected mastermind was named as Belgian Abdelhamid Abaoud. It was an attack on a way of life. But the Parisians say they will not be bowed. It was so heartbreaking, wasn't it? Do you know what? But don't call the people that did this masterminds. They're not masterminds. ISIS are hypocritical cowards. Think about it. They want to take us back to when the Quran was written, the 7th century. And how do they do that? By using rocket launchers, Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> mobile phones and bombs. You didn't have those in the 7th century, did you, you warmongering pricks? <laughs> They're ignorant thugs who've hijacked a religion to create fear. Or, to quote Boris Johnson, jihadis are porn-watching wankers. <laughs> yes. Now, the other thing... The other thing that pisses me off is that Twitter was awash with offers of help and defiance, and then right-wing morons tweet this. The parish attacks were committed by devout Muslims. No, they weren't. ISIS aren't devout Muslims, they're terrorists. They don't speak for Muslims any more than Katie Hopkins speaks for me. <laughs> Muslims believe in peace. They don't believe in beheadings or slavery, and they certainly don't agree with some of the insane things ISIS want to ban, like music, art, female education, skinny jeans, <laughs> the word vicar, table football, magicians, and pigeon breeding. <laughs> I'm not making this up. <laughs> ISIS has banned pigeon breeding, claiming that the sight of the bird's genitals is offensive to Islam. <laughs> Muslims don't care about pigeons' dicks, cos no one has ever seen one. <laughs> it's not like pigeons are wandering around like that. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> if your nickname is Pigeon Dick, that is not a compliment. <laughs> We cannot be afraid of these morons. It's the people's job to live your life. It's the government's job to look after the people, and it's the comedian's job to make people laugh. That's why, when I read stuff like this... <coughs> According to intelligence gathered by police, terrorists have started training in rural parts of Wales. I'm not scared. Do you know why? ISIS will never topple Welsh women. They are formidable! <laughs> I mean, where else would you see a headline like this? <coughs> Drunken woman from Wales takes bite out of car during <laughs> argument. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make, terrorism can't destroy humanity. Look what the people of Paris did the day after the attacks. Parisians were reclaiming their streets, lining up in their droves to donate blood. That is defiance. Should we stay inside and cower in fear? Fuck no. Now, talking of defiance, look at this response to tragedy. This is incredible. At the Bataclan Theatre, Antoine Larisse lost his wife, the mother of his little boy. He wrote, We are only two, my son and I, but we are more powerful than all the world's armies. In any case, 
I have no more time to waste on you. I need to get back to Melville, who is waking up from his afternoon nap. He's just 17 months old. He'll eat his snack like every day, and then we're going to play like we do every day. And every day of his life, this little boy will insult you with his happiness and freedom. Now that is magnificent. Next up, let's have a bit of joy. Did you hear about George Clooney? George Clooney has travelled halfway around the world for a sandwich. Yes, he <laughs> did. He visited a cafe which supports homeless people. Did you see the effect he had on women? I got a selfie with George Clooney. He's so handsome. I love George. <laughs> I love George! <laughs> One lady melt. Hey, how you doing? Hi, hey, George. Hi. Yes. Hi. 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 Oh, it was amazing. I was trying to get a photo of him and he actually came up to me after I got the photo and he shook my hand and he says, Hello, is it really cold here? I said, Yes, it's really cold. <laughs> I said, I'm going for a spider. I've never been happier in my life. <laughs> he even got a photo with the staff. And if you look closely, I think one of the ladies might have slipped a finger up his ass. <laughs> 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 now. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> that's, that's what George was doing afterwards, right? <laughs> it wasn't just Clooney who brought joy to the world. Check out this wonder hound. A bulldog called Otto has cheered us all up this morning by hopping on a skateboard in Peru. Otto the bulldog posted under the legs of 30 people in Lima in Peru and gained himself recognition with Guinness World Records. I love it. I love it so much. It's the way he puts his leg down, that's the bit. <laughs> He went that fast. Did you see the size of his bollocks? Did you... <laughs> <laughs> He's better than any human skateboarder in the world. You think I was impressed? His dad was delighted. Oh, yes. <laughs> that... This... This was my favourite bit of the report. Listen to what his owner said. His owner says Otto will now have some time off whilst he decides what next. going to decide what to do next. He's a dog. He's not going to have a gap year to find himself. <laughs> what did you learn? Um... My balls taste nice. <laughs> Whatever he does. Well done, Otto. It's not easy breaking records when the camera's rolling. Oh... Obviously, something awful happened in France this week. But, my friends, before the tragedy struck, something wonderful happened there. Cyclist David Pedlo is setting the bar high when it comes to keeping his wife happy. While most of us might feel grateful for a cup of tea in bed in the morning, 70-year-old David, who's now back in Plymouth, cycled all the way to France just to buy his wife's favourite brand of coffee. You can't buy Grand Mare in England. Jackie likes Grand Mare. Oh, what a let! Did you hear the women in the room melting? <laughs> he rode to France to get his wife a coffee. My granddad won't even go to the kitchen. <laughs> Trinity's like that with everything. Chance your Chinese, love? Yeah, okie dokie, I'm off to Beijing. <laughs> I bet you, after this titanic effort, I bet his wife was delighted. I bet she showered him with kisses and ran him a hot bath. He did only cycle 23 miles. <laughs> what? He's 70! What does he have to do? He cycled to a different country in a different time zone, ordered in a different language, and she's like, mm, I'd rather have tea. <laughs> He's a legend! When I saw this story, I had to do this. Jackie and David. Best wishes from the Good News team. Russell.
Well, thanks, Russell. Health news now. Check this story out. Now, take a look at these. Can you guess what they are? <laughs> Tea cosies? They are knitted breasts. <laughs> are they? <laughs> it might seem odd that I'm holding them. It's a bit, it's the news. But holding and handling props like these is proving an effective way of encouraging new mums to breastfeed. Yep, this is the slightly bizarre news that knitted boobs help women breastfeed. Whatever turns them on. <laughs> Probably what they do, right? They, um... <laughs> they play with the knitted breasts, right? And they're, um... <laughs> uh, do, you wanna, do you wanna grow up? <laughs> they... Uh, excuse me. <laughs> they... They... <laughs> they play with... <laughs> They play with the knitted breasts, they're shown how to squeeze them, and it helps them breastfeed the kids. <laughs> now, what... <laughs> what, I, what I love most about this story, aside from the fact that I got to play with these on telly, is <laughs> the ladies that do the knitting. Look at that! <laughs> what an insane hobby! What are you doing, Nan? Knitting tits! <laughs> they're amazing! I mean, how joyous is this lady? This lady walked in and said, I'm looking for some knitters to come and knit, knit breasts at the hospital. And I said, yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> I'll do your woolly fanny if you want, I don't care. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? What I would say, though, it's not just new mums that need help. Some new dads struggle too. Want to change your bum? Oh, my God. Right. OK. Dirty girl. Now, my guest this week is a professional adventurer. He swam, cycled and ran the entire length of Great Britain, earning the nickname the British Forest Gump. I'm an endurance adventurer who lives on a boat. <laughs> I got the bug for adventure when I first cycled Land's End to John O'Groats. It took me a month to cycle it, and the record's 44 hours, so <laughs> I really was bad at cycling. Five years later, I was looking for something else to do, and I, I, I came across the idea of swimming Land's End to John O'Groats, thinking it had been done, and it turns out no one had even attempted a length of Britain swim. What was meant to be two months landed at being four and a half months. I remember getting to the end thinking, right, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> but then a, a few months went by and I just thought, I've got to do the run now, don't I? The first person in history to have done a length of Britain triathlon. Please welcome Sean Conway! Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> um, what? Fits? <laughs> yes! <laughs> There you go, that's never happened on the show before. People mistake me for George Clooney all the time, yeah. it's really annoying, yeah. That and um... Lion-O. <laughs> I'm, I'm fascinated by you. I, I find you very interesting. Oh, thank you very much. What I want to know is, I'm sort of envious, but why do you do what you do? Because oh. it's, it's, it's kind of amazing and crazy at the same time. Well, I started off doing it because I turned 30 um, in 2011 and was miserable with the life I'd set up for myself. Yeah. So I sold my business for a pound um, and then spent four pounds on the frame to frame the pound. So I was minus three pounds yeah. <laughs> from day one. Uh, and just thought, oh, you know, I just need to... There's more to life than just earning money. Yeah. Whereas, actually, if you focus your life on experiences and purpose and things like that, you leave a, a, lead a happier and more successful life, I think. And so I thought of swimming the length of Britain, thinking, oh, surely it's been done. It lands in China Groat, such an iconic route. So I yeah. went straight online and thought, oh, who's done it before me? I'll be the fastest person. And soon found out no one had even attempted it. So um... Presumably, there, there is a moment, you know, where you get stung by a jellyfish when you find yourself <laughs> thinking, oh, money's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when I, when I did the swim, I was getting stung in the face by jellyfish a lot. 
uh, and I soon realised where I had a beard, um, I wasn't getting stung as much. So that's why you grew so the beard? So that's why I grew the beard. I grew the beard to shield my face from jellyfish so, things. So who um, knew that? So jellyfish hate beards? Yeah, well... <laughs> Ironically, ironically, they don't go anywhere near. <laughs> they don't go to Shoreditch. They hate it. And also, there's an urban myth on what fixes jellyfish stings. I've heard that. Yeah, that um, it's getting weed on, isn't it? Yeah, it it does not work and was very embarrassing. <laughs> considering <laughs> I got stung hang on, hang on. Face. So were they, they were weeing on your face. <laughs> we kind of used a, a, a cloth. Uh, it was my own as well, not not the crew. See, was... that's what I'm getting at. Surely, at that moment, <laughs> you think money's better than this. <laughs> uh, so, how long did it take? I thought it would take two months. It took four and a half. Four and a half months of just swimming? I mean, there were days where I couldn't swim because of the bad weather, so yeah. big storms in Scotland, nearly sank the boat. Um, but, and your brain never just occasionally went mad? Like, you never just found yourself thinking... Oh, every day. Weird. Especially yeah. the night sessions. You get in, the, get in, cos it's all tidal, so you've got to swim with the tide. Oh. Uh, but I swear this happened at Cape Rath. As I was going around the, court, the top, yeah. uh, I'm swimming along, and there's this bird swimming below me, and it looks at me and it winks. And this happened. No, it didn't. This definitely <laughs> happened. 100% this happened. Oh, no. It but went to me and it's swimming, <laughs> and then it swam to the surface, got up, popped up, and then flew away. And I, went, I got out of the water, and I, the g g girl in the kayak, Em, I was like, did you see that? She's like, no, mate. I, it definitely happened. Oh, I love that. And then Is five that minutes later, this massive storm came in. We, the, the kayak capsized, the rib capsized, and we and nearly a, And a fish went, come yeah, with me, the <laughs> Protect you with the coral. It definitely happened. They didn't, mate. Definitely that's happened. I love you. It's been really interesting, but that, that's a breakdown. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A seagull came along with hello. <laughs> <laughs> Although it is interesting when you form bonds. Like when I, I mean, it's a similar kind of thing. I used to have a paper round. It's three miles long. So I, <laughs> I feel and know your pain. And I used to get so bored on that. I used to chat to the, uh, what, you know, what, the wood pigeons. That yeah, ha, yeah. Ha. I used to. <laughs> yeah, I used to do that too. <laughs> See, yeah, but no, I've never met anyone that's tried to have a chat with wood pigeons. <laughs> I'd normally sad. trumpet, but you know how actually to do it. Yeah. I just used to go, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and then you pull out, oh, actually, what you do is this. What do you think he was trying to tell you? Good on you, mate. There was a storm coming, I think. There's, there's a storm Yeah, coming. I know, a very odd way of saying that. Surely, storm, yeah. fucking storm! <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're really oh, fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, man. I know. The other thing yeah. I find interesting about you, um, there's so much stuff. You climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Yes. It's a fantastic thing to have done. Yeah. But you didn't do it in an ordinary fashion. No. So, Mount Kilimanjaro, highest freestanding mountain in the world. Uh, there were seven of us, all my mates, all said, right, let's go up in the pub. And I swear this Just happened. that night you left. Yeah, yeah literally, you're like, right, let's go. Um, and I'm pretty sure we all agreed to wear penguin suits and waddle up for charity. <laughs> uh, so the next morning, I went and bought my penguin suit, and we all flew out, and I got my penguin suit, and they were like, we're joking, mate. <laughs> I was like, oh, what? I've told everyone. <laughs> and once you tell three people, then you can't go back. Yeah. Uh, so I waddled up uh, Kilimanjaro in a penguin suit. How extraordinary is that? And, the, uh... <laughs> the entire... The, but, and exactly, it's incredible. I love it. Because... I even had the yellow feet and everything. It was, it was quite hard. But... I felt really bad for everyone with their altimeters and crampons and... <laughs> Do you know what I feel bad for? The other people climbing. Yeah. Altitude sickness, they look over and they're like, oh, my God, there's a penguin. <laughs> with a really big beard. Yeah, I know. I was worried about that, cos I didn't want to devalue other people's attempts. But actually, it had the reverse effect. People were kind of like, bloody hell, if a bloody penguin can do it, I can do it. And then they would, like, get up and march up. And, and you did um, it? You made it all the way? Yeah, I summited twice, cos nice. my one mate got altitude sickness and he was far behind, so on my way back down, I turned around and, and carried him up again. You, uh, well, well, how lovely yeah. is that? So a yeah. penguin carried a man yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So lovely image of you just... <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever... Actually, I was going to ask you about this, right? When you were jogging, have you ever sort of run into weirdos? Because I've done... I've run... I've run... No, the genuine. <laughs> I did the Bath Half Marathon, right? Did that, and a lady, she's not making such about 60, was behind me, kind of looking at my ass, genuinely going, <laughs> That's what I call good news. <laughs> I, I, and hit my ass. Right? So I'm curious, do you. Because Britain is full of wild and interesting people. Have you oh, run into any of those? amazing. I love everyone in Britain. I, I love doing adventures here because. You get, you get quite a few lock ins. Those are quite fun. Yeah, of course. I, 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 during my run, I, I have a Welsh mate 
um, who tweeted me and said, oh, mate, you know, you can't run Britain and not come to Wales. I was like, ah, damn it, you're right. Uh, and I'd already planned to be in Bristol yeah. the following day, so I had to run 40 miles uh, to have a pint with a Welshman. So I got to this pub... And, and don't tell me it was closed. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it was 5 to 11, so yeah. I thought I'll get, you know, at least one pint in with Matt. And um, the, the landlord's like, oh, don't worry, lock in, lock in, oh, it's nice. fine. I'm like, oh, great, you know, 1 o'clock, 2 I o'clock, I, oh, only 3 just o'clock. On, yeah. <laughs> Eventually 5.30, the sun's coming up, we're like, right, let's go to sleep. Uh, Slept for a few hours, 8 o'clock in the morning, got up, had a fry-up and ran a marathon. Oh, <laughs> that is amazing. Um, right, one last question. What is next for you? Desk job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm planning a really, really long Ironman. So I've done the swim, cycle and run, but all independently. So I've, in my mind, I've planned this really long Ironman, which a normal Ironman takes 15 hours. Yeah. My one is three months. Shit. Somewhere there. <laughs> I'll do the Forrest Gump thing, but now with all disciplines. Nice. Well, I tell you what, how amazing was that? Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful <laughs> Sean Conway. <laughs> Elsewhere in the news, how mental is this? A campaign's been launched asking the public to come up with messages to send to aliens in space. <laughs> Why don't they want us to write letters to aliens? I say we send them a prank message so when they arrive, who are ISIS? And why do they think we haven't got the guts to ainly probe them? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should do. <laughs> so, why are we sending messages to aliens? Voyagers 1 and 2 were launched in the 70s, carrying recordings and greetings for extraterrestrial life that might come across the aircraft. But researchers now want to update the messages to reflect the last 40 years. I'm not surprised we're sending an update. They're probably like, forget everything we said about Rolf Harris! <laughs> <laughs> Do not write to Jimmy Savile! He won't fix anything! <laughs> Why do you... I'm not sure we should be chatting to aliens. Did you hear? What this woman reckons they did? A former US Air Force radar operator was abducted to the moon by lizard men for nightly sex <laughs> and was also forced to stack boxes. <laughs> Jesus, that would have changed the John Lewis ad, wouldn't it? Uh, 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 right now, tidy up. <laughs> no fact pass with that telescope. I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> Elsewhere in the news, there's been some mental crime stories knocking around. Have you heard how police in Cambridge want victims to contact them? Police in Cambridge are telling crime victims to call them via Skype instead of expecting a visit by an officer. <laughs> well, it's a great idea, isn't it? Unless you've had your laptop mixed. <laughs> or you're a pensioner. They're not great with technology. I called my nan on FaceTime the other day. She thought I was stuck in the phone. <laughs> so I had to play along. I had to. <laughs> To be honest, Skype's not a good idea. You never know what can happen. Ooh, sick to that. Mmm. Let me see your face. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. Mind you. Mind you, if you think using Skype's weird, have a look what police in Leicester have been doing. First tonight, criticism of Leicestershire Police after it was revealed the force has only been investigating attempted burglaries if they happen at homes with even numbers. <laughs> They've only been dealing with break-ins at even-numbered houses? How do they come up with that? We need to half crime figures. <laughs> Select the crimes you want to deal with. Hello, officer. I've been shot. How many times? Three. Sorry. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, isn't it? Did you see why they're doing it? It's one of the latest ideas by Leicestershire Police to try and save money. <laughs> save money? What are they going to do next? Get rid of sirens? Have them leaning out of the car and says, Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Christ, what do their tasers look like? Taser, taser, taser! Oh, yes! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Not that. Oh, thanks very much. Not that. 
Not that all cutback stories are depressing. Did you see this belter from Barnsley? Bus driver leaves hilarious note to passengers after bell stops working. Yes, he did. Look at this. Bell's not working. If you want bus to stop, shout ding ding. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> well, I could get it fixed. No, let's have a bit of fun. <laughs> no bell, ding ding. <laughs> Indicator's broken. You, get down there and blink like boogery. <laughs> Right, everyone, we're reversing. All together, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> oh, no, I've run someone over. <laughs> Don't worry, it's an even-numbered street. Beep, <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Now, this week, the world may feel like a darker place, but hopefully this conversation between a father and son will put a little bit of light back into it. Do you understand what happened? Do you understand why these people did that? Oui, parce qu'ils sont très, très, très méchants. Les méchants, c'est pas très gentil, les méchants. Et il faut faire vraiment attention parce qu'il faut, il faut changer de maison. Mais non, t'inquiète pas. On n'a pas besoin de changer de maison. C'est la France, notre maison. Mais il y a des méchants, papa. Oui, mais il y a des méchants partout. Il y a des méchants partout. Ils ont les pistolets, ils peuvent nous tirer dessus parce qu'ils sont très très méchants, papa. Oui. C'est pas grave, ils ont des pistolets, nous on a des fleurs. Bah les fleurs, ça fait rien, c'est pour. C'est pour. C'est pour. Euh... Si regarde, tu vois, tout le monde pose des fleurs. Oui. C'est pour combattre les pistolets. C'est pour. C'est pour protéger. Voilà. Et les bougies aussi. C'est pour ne pas oublier les gens qui, se, qui sont partis. Hein. C'est pour nous protéger les fleurs et les bougies. Oui. Ça va mieux du coup Oui, ça va mieux. Thanks very much for watching the news. Good night, my friends.